We begin this service by acknowledging that we are on indigenous land covered by Treaty 18. For thousands of years, um, indigenous peoples have cared for, built communities, and used this land. We specifically thank um, the Patoon, Anishinaabe, and the Wendat, who are most recent stewards of this place. This acknowledgement reminds us of our legal obligations to indigenous peoples and our responsibilities to care for the lands. Lighting the Christ candle. As we pause at the door of a new year and prepare to cross its threshold, let us carry the peace of Christ's love in our hearts and our lives so that we may make peace possible in our time. Together, let this candlelight shine throughout our daily lives, that all may know we follow in Christ's way. May the light of peace shine through us to all of God's children. Amen. Good morning and Happy New Year. Today is January 7th, 2024. And we are here at St. John's United Church. Welcome. Welcome those who visit us and worship with us together. This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us, be, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Fellowship will be held in Shilton Hall right after this gathering. I have a couple of announcements to share with you. On behalf of the congregation, I'd like to extend our sympathy to the family of Mary Jane Matthew, whose husband, Bart Johnson, passed away on December 29, 2023. A memorial visitation will be held today in Forest Taylor Funeral Home in Sutton. And a 2 to 4 and 7 to 9 funeral service is scheduled tomorrow, Monday, at Knox United Church in Sutton at 12 in the afternoon. I just got a call from uh, Bob Fraser that his, his wife, Mildred, has been in Matthew's house for several days. So he's, he, he, he made a call for me to visit, him, visit her today. Is there any other announcement? If not, I invite you to turn around and to pass the peace of, uh, to one another, saying Happy New Year.
join me in call to worship. Gather together, people of God, on the threshold of a new year. Wondrous surprises await. Be patient, be hopeful, be diligent. Let us worship our God who continues to bless us with enduring love. In our time together at the beginning of a new year, Keep alive in us the hope of the angel's song. Push us to live out the love of the babe in the manger. At this time of looking ahead, we move into the unknown with hope. Loving God, as we turn the calendar page, reveal to us the joy of new beginnings found in you. Our opening hymn from Voices United 82, A Light is Gleaming, start with refrain, verse 1, 2, refrain, verses 3 and 4, and refrain. Thank you. 
Please be seated. Join me in the prayer of confession also in responsibly. Come with us, loving God, as we go hopefully into a new year. In our apathy, motivate us. Into life's routines, settle us. Sparkle our friendship with joy. Gift us with the ability to engage with the deep feelings of others. Be with us in the times of celebration. Grant us compassion for ourselves and others and keep the teachings and spirit of Jesus guiding us. Scripture reading this morning is taken from the Second Corinthians chapter four, verses sixteen to eighteen. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For our slight. Momentary affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measures. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. This is the word of God.
It is so glad that we have choir every Sunday. Thank you. And welcome back, Tom Shepherd. It is not in the dictionary, but I like to say we human beings are history reflectors. Time itself has no knots, no boundaries, but we are so analytic and sometimes so logical that we make knots on the flux of time and put up a set of milestones on it and divide it into the old and the new. What's the difference between December 31st, 2023 and January 1st, 2024? Like today, the same sun, we see the same sun rise and go down tomorrow. But people like to say, a Happy New Year on the first day of each new year. The word January is derived from the name of the Roman god, Janus, who has two faces. One of his faces looked to the old and going year, and the other a new and coming year. The face he turns to the previous year looked old and sad, but the other young and bright. Family members gather together over the Christmas season to catch up with each other with reflections on 2023 and anticipation and prediction of the new year 2024. On the one hand, it is suitable for us to forget bad things, painful memories as time passed. On the other hand, learning that we are all getting a year older is not quite optimistic. Paul, the writer of the letter to people of Corinth, proclaims that he and his colleagues who are engaged in the ministry of God do not lose heart. The reason is that even though their outer nature is wasting away, but their inner nature is being renewed day by day. In Greek, two words represent the word new in English. One is neos and the other is kainos. Neos represents for new things that takes place chronologically. Kainos stands for renewal, new things in quality and in spirit. From the physical point of view, life may be slow, but inevitably slipping down the slope that leads us to aging and eventually to death. We cannot become new, become young again physically. However, it is possible be to become kainos, to become new in spirit, in quality. When our physical eyes get blind, it may be when our spiritual eyes get brighter and see God. When we get deaf and need a hearing aid, it may be a time to listen to the heavenly voice clearly and loudly deep down from the heart. When our physical memories fade away, it may be a time to remember the grace of God and recognize the blessings we have received. Did I not tell you that 
Did then I tell you how many bags I carried when I first came to Canada and my, how many bags my wife carried? Do you remember that? No. I did around five years ago. Yes, we are human beings, so the past is past. I just remind you, I carried two bags with me when I first came to Canada. My wife, eight bags. <laughs> That's two different human species, I believe. But last month, December, my only daughter was married. And when I retrospect my 30 years life in Canada, I've been so blessed, no matter what. Of course, there's uh, stormy days, there's uh, difficult times, but overall, I must say, I've been so blessed. How can we make new become canos day by day? St. Paul gives us a hint. In the same letter, chapter 5, verses 17 to 18, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That's the hard way to make new, make kainos day by day. Is Christ in you? You should say yes. Please say yes. <laughs> because we celebrated Christmas together just two weeks ago. Christ, God's Son, is born into our hearts, our family, town, and the world. That's our belief. But be sure, Christ is born as a baby, not as an adult. So baby needs our care. Am I right? Baby needs care, a delicate care. If not, we lose Christ. Paul describes it, his Christmas story, in the same letter, chapter 4, verses 4, verses 7, verse 7. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God, does not come from us. That's the Christmas message. But this treasure is Christ. And clay jar, this human body is clay jar. If you go to King James Version, it is translated as uh, the earthen, the earthen vessels, clay jars, earthen vessels, which carry Christ, which is belong to God, not belong to us. Came down to us, not from us. Because the body is the stable. Yes, Christ is born in the stable. Christ is born in this stable human body where animals dwell, where animal natures dwell. So that we human beings fight each other. Family members fight, neighbors fight, nations fight. And so many broken relationships we have today. So reconciliation with God, with our neighbors, and with oneself is another step to make new, make kindness. It is not an easy task. 
But that's the daily mission of the church and its people. So our gathering begins with the video acknowledging the land to make reconciliation with God and with the indigenous people in this land. The world desperately needs peace through reconciliation, through equality. If not, we get a never-ending bloodshed. But those who make new in Christ shall dream a dream and of transforming and kindness ending, which is proclaimed in the book of Revelation. The last chapter, John says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. Here the sea stands for a darkness. Evil no more. See, the home of God is among mortals. He is dwell with them as their God, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. That is another Christmas story, according to the last book in the New Testament. God is among us. A legend says John was old. His eyes were blind, his ears deaf, when he wrote the book, the Revelation at the age of 130. But he saw a new heaven and a new earth. He heard the voice of God loudly and clearly, for he became new in Christ day by day. I read the book of Revelation more than 50 times in my life. I still don't get it. Honestly, I still don't get it. So I hope and pray as I am getting older, I may understand more and fully. That is my way of reconciliation with God and with the Bible. There are two ways of seeing life. One is to pursue the things that are seen, which is a journey adrift from God. The other is a journey close to God, walking along with God and faithful to God. The writer to the Hebrews says of faith, Faith is the assurance of things hopeful, the conviction of things not seen. By faith, Moses left Egypt, unafraid of the king's anger, for he persevered as though he saw him who is invisible. So many things just happened the first week of the new year, right? So many things happened. You know, two wars still on in Ukraine and in Palestine. Uh, another high school shooting in the U.S. state of Iowa. The first day of the school. And the first day, January 1st, earthquake in Japan again and shootings in between North and South Korea. But we will, we will make a new plan. Retake an adventure and become a new creation in Christ because we, we have the treasure the extraordinary power. 
which gave us the courage to move on and to get through all the difficulties coming with hope, with love, and with joy. And this is final comment. It's not, it's not in the, just, just pop up in my mind. This is another way to make new. Do you know that? I came to Canada in 1994. So this is 2024. So I was, when I first came to Canada, I feel like I was born again. So I am now 30 years old. <laughs> I mean, literally, am I right? It doesn't matter whether you agree with me or not. Just travel a lot and, and expose yourself to other people, other nations, other, country, other culture. That's the, another way to, to grow and to, to make new. So that's, that's my, my approach. One more approach to make new in Christ. Amen and amen. Our next hymn, verses 79, Arise, your light is come. As the offering is collected, let us use this time to reflect on what Epiphany means to each of us, how God has gifted each of us, and what new insights we seek in the way we use those gifts to honor God. The offering is now received with pantry basket.
of the offering. We discover Jesus' friend and sibling in all our neighbors near and far away. Amen. You may be seated. Closing him, Voices United 81, as we gladden his men of old. Now may the peace and promise of our God go with you. May the Alpha and Omega, your beginning, your ending, and your eternal home guide and strengthen you. Go in peace and love in the name of Christ. Please be seated. <laughs> 